Have you ever wondered how to lay out graphics when you're not painting the car? You know, do you have to sand the surface? Do you have to re-clear? Do you have to completely repaint the, the car you're working on? Well, this is Donnie Smith, and in this video, we're going to show you how. Yes, yeah, Donnie Smith, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to lay graphics on something that has already been painted. For example, you're not in the process of painting it. You just want to lay down some stripes, some flames, or you know whatever graphic it is, and uh, you want to know the steps because there's a lot of questions about this. You know, do I have to sand the surface? Do I have to repaint the surface? Uh, what are the steps to take? So this video is going to going to cover the basic steps. Now this is a video I made a while back. However, the audio was horrible. I am talking in this video, but I had to do a voiceover because there was buffers and DAs and sanders in the background. It was very hard to uh, to understand what I was saying, and I had a lot of comments on that. So I'm redoing this video with this voiceover so that you can kind of understand. I'll kind of narrate the process. But anyway, the first step that I'm doing here and I'm demonstrating is that you always want to wash the surface with uh, soap and water. I want to make sure that you're uh, working on a clean surface to get rid of all the silicones and other contaminants because that can lead to a lot of the paint problems that we have so we wash it with soap and water and I have a pressure washer here that I'm using and uh, you know I realize you may not have one of these at your house so you know you don't have to use a pressure washer you can just use a, a hose to rinse it off real good but you want to wash it good and you want to rinse it good just to make sure all that's off then once we have it washed and rinsed off, I'm going to use a, some compressed air to dry it off really good and make sure all the water's off before I continue. So I'm using air here, just blowing it off, kind of speed up the process. You could let it air dry, but you know it's going to take longer. And this also helps remove any dust that may be hiding in, in crevices. Once I got it blew off real good with air, I'm going to use some wax and grease remover. And this is just to assure that all traces of silicones and waxes and any other type of contaminants is off of the panel that I'm going to be working on. And these steps can be followed for, you know, one panel that you're working on, two, three, the front end, you know, or the entire car, you know, before you put your graphics on. So I'm getting it clean. That's the key. That's the first step is to make sure you're working with a clean surface. Now what I'm talking about in the video, I'm just pointing out a few, you know, imperfections. You know, we're assuming this is a brand new panel or, you know, a paint that's in very good condition because that's what the questions are about. We're not going to be repainting this panel, the complete panel. Uh, there are a few chips that I pointed out here, but we're not going to be so concerned with this. This is just a te test panel that we're doing, demonstrating how to do this. Now the way we normally do this uh, is to use a DA sander and we'll sand the surface with 800 grit. We are going to sand the entire surface, but we're not going to paint the entire surface. Uh, once it's sanded, we'll lay down our graphics, and then we will apply clear coat over the entire panel. Now when using a DA, you want this interface pad, and I'm using 800 grit paper to sand the surface. You want to be real careful around your edges not to sand or burn through your edges, because if you do, there may only be clear clear coat there. If you do that, you may have to repaint. Uh, again, I realize everybody might not have a DA and, and all that at home, so I'm demonstrating this video how to do it with just a regular wet or dry sandpaper. I'm folding the sandpaper up into thirds, and I'm going to sand the entire surface. Now I'm using thousand grit sandpaper to sand the surface. I'm going to get the wash bucket that I was using, get the sponge, just to allow some water. You want to keep a, a lot of water so it lubricates it real good. If there's any dirt, you know, it'll wash it off. And I showed there how I had my fingers uh, pushing down the sandpaper. You do not want to do that or that might leave little uh, prints where you did that. You want to use the flat of your hand and go over the entire surface. And again with sandpaper, just like with the DA, be careful around your edges because that's where the paint and clear is going to sand the fastest. We don't want to bust through the clear coat anywhere. We're just wanting to rough it up a little bit so that the, the graphics and the clear coat will adhere properly. Now 
now I've got the entire surface sanded with the sandpaper and I always go over it with a scotch bright make sure it's a gray one not a red one because that would uh that's too coarse and you'd be able to see the scratches through the clear but I'll get a gray one and go around the edges really good and go ahead and go around the entire panel just to assure that you know everything is scuffed up properly and you know that the, everything's going to stick well so I'm going to go around the entire panel with this gray scuff pad Now I've got the panel completely sanded and scuffed and now I'm just going to get the pressure washer or water hose whatever you have and rinse it off real good and make sure all that residue's off and and uh, make sure it's super clean. Okay now we've got it in the booth we've got it cleaned uh, we have it wiped down with wax and grease remover again to sure everything's clean and now we're going to start taping and now I've got some this is fine line tape uh, there's different companies that make it I usually use 3M and also here I'm showing some different type some different methods used. This is a paper that has a, a adhesion on one side it'll stick to the panel and you can draw your artwork on there and cut it out. This comes in different widths. That's one way. But I'm just going to be using tape for this demonstration. I'm going to lay the I'm going to do some flames. And keep in mind I'm just demonstrating this to show the steps. Uh didn't spend a lot of time uh, really laying out flames and uh, just kind of going through the steps. One thing when laying out this tape, it's kind of like electrical tape. If you stretch it, it's going to shrink back. So you do need to pull it tight a little bit, but be careful pulling the tape too tight when you're making your curves and corners. Because if you do, it's going to shrink back and your corners are going to lift. So don't pull the tape too tight or else you'll have areas around your corners where paint will end up seeping through where it lifted at. Another thing when masking, uh, if you don't like the way it looks, you can always pull it off and start over. And another thing that I'm talking about here is you got to remember what's being painted. By this outline that you kind of look at, you kind of start thinking about the outside because that's what you see. But you've uh, everything on the inside of that edge will actually be the flame. So you know you need to keep that in mind, or that can get a little confusing. But just keep in mind that it's going to be everything inside of that line. And again, I'm just laying out these stripes just as a quick demonstration. Uh, someone that lays stripes out every day that is really good at this, you know, they can do this really fast. Uh, but, you know, if not, you know, if you're not someone that does it every day, you can still do it. It's just going to take some time and you may have to uh, peel the tape up and redo it a couple of times. And believe me, I'm not that artistic. You know, and this is, uh, you know, I'm not real good at doing a lot of graphics like this you know especially when it comes to airbrushed and freehand and things like that so but the, you know if, if, you know if I can do it anybody can because I'm really not that artistic when it comes to this uh, type of work And it may not be till you get it laid out to see how it looks. That's when you might need to do a little bit of tweaking. You know, pull some of your tape and, and readjust it 
uh, so that you know you get it the way you like it again I don't do this every day and if you do you probably don't have to do this but you know you can you know just to let you know that you can do this if you, you get it laid out and think man I really don't like the way that looks well go ahead and adjust it a little bit I mean this is a you know this paint flame or whatever graphic you're doing it's going to be permanent so go ahead and make sure that it's exactly the way you want it you know I've got it outlined I've got it the way I want it and now I'm going to continue masking this off now I'm going to use some masking tape this is inch and a half masking tape and I'm just going to basically outline the fine line that I've laid down. I'm going to go around it and make sure everything's covered. And this is where you want to make sure that there's no tiny little gaps in between the the blue masking tape and the masking tape you're putting on because if there is you know some paint might get on it. So anyway I went and outlined all that with masking tape and now I'm going to put some masking paper to further mask that off. So I'll basically just uh, you know mask around that with some paper. Again, go around all of your edges as you're masking and make sure there's no uh, gaps that shouldn't have paint on it exposed. This is where all the time, you know, it's time consuming. This is what makes a, you know, either a good or bad paint job look good. If there's little specks of paint in there and, and I'll show you how we can take care of it if, if there is here in a little bit, but uh, spend some extra time masking. Now we've got it masked off. I'm going to tack it off and every time you tack, be sure and, uh, Fold your tack cloth all the way out and make a puffy little ball out of it and that'll do a lot better. That'll help eliminate all the residues from you know getting on the paint surface. Now I'm gonna lightly wipe down, you know, where I'm gonna spray this flame area. There's a lot of different ways to spray flames. In this video, I'm just using an airbrush, and I'm just going to kind of go around the edges and kind of go from there. Uh, I'm using a waterborne paint, and again, I didn't spend a lot of time, you know, with the colors and things like that. It's just a kind of the steps of how to do it. Uh, I had s some yellow and some orange, and I'm going to use that on this. But again, if this was an actual job, you know, I'd probably spend a little more time uh, with the actual layout of the flame and, uh, you know, with the colors. And you can see right there in that corner right there, I kind of messed up a little bit. The uh, flame kind of comes up above the outline a little bit. And that is the good thing about airbrushing. Just about anything can be fixed. And like I mentioned a minute ago, you know, if I can do this, anybody can do this. And the, and the good thing, and what this video is for, is people that really are artistic. There's a lot of people out there that are awesome with airbrush. They're awesome with, uh, you know, art. And they could really do some cool freehand things um, but they don't have the knowledge of how to get it on a car you know and how to, where you know be a good quality job and not peel or flake off and this video is just kind of to uh, to help those type of people out that have the artistic ability but they don't have the knowledge of uh, of how to sand it and prep it and clear coat it and things like that so I put a coat on I'm gonna let it dry and then I'm gonna come back and put another coat on Now I'm going to start back with a second coat. I'm just going to kind of build up on what I had, hitting the edges real heavy and kind of outlining what I have there. Okay, now I've grabbed some orange and I'm going to kind of go around some of the edges with some orange, just kind of blend that in. 
And again, if you're real artistic, you know, you can do a lot better job with this part of it. You know, I'm just kind of demonstrating the, the parts. I didn't put a lot of thought into, you know, the colors and design itself. Anyway, I kind of went around some of the edges with orange. And I don't want to get too in depth with this. I mean, you could put shadows and highlights. There's a lot of things you can do. But again, this video is not for that part of it. So I'm going to just call that good. I'm going to unmask this and then go to the clear coat stages. Now we have a panel. The entire panel has been sanded with 1000 grit, wet or dry. The graphics has been uh, applied on top of that sanded surface. And now we're ready to go ahead and clear coat. Now we're going to clear coat the entire surface. So if you're doing this to one door or two doors or a front end or a whole car, these same steps would be followed. Now normally when I clear in a lot of my videos, you know, it says two full wet coats. Anytime I'm laying stripes or graphics, the first coat I always put a light coat on. This is a tack coat. This is just kind of a bridge over the lines or, you know, where the, the graphic may be so that it doesn't run or have a sag look there. So I'll put a tack coat on. And then once the tack coat is on, is on, then I will apply my two, two full wet coats. And if you're going to be doing a lot of sanding and buffing, you may even apply more clear to give you more uh, clear to sand and buff. But this is my first coat I'm applying. I'm applying it and notice that you know I'm going all the way across the panel, not just the graphic area. I am clear coating the entire panel. Now I'm applying my second full wet coat, and this is my final coat. I'm going to apply it, and then the panel will be completed, and that will be how you do it. And then you could sand and buff it out if you would like. And again, if you're going to be doing a lot of sanding and buffing, you know, you may want to uh, put a third coat on just for that extra film thickness. But that pretty well wraps up this video, and, and again, this is basically just the steps of how to do it. And uh, hope this video is helpful. And if you like this video, be sure and share it with your friends. And so here's a quick recap of the steps to follow. First, make sure you're working with a clean panel to do that. Wash it with soap and water. Then you can air dry it to speed it up and also that to get rid of some of the dirt that may be hiding in the crevices. Uh, then you're going to wipe it with uh, wax and grease remover to make sure all the wax and greases, contaminants, silicones is off the panel. Then you're going to use some uh, thousand grit wet or dry to sand the entire panel because we're going to clear coat the entire panel. So sand it all with 1000 grit and then use a gray scuff pad to go around the edges and make sure everything is scuffed properly. Then rinse it back off, make sure it's good and clean. Then you can start your masking process. First, use your fine line. It comes in quarter inch and an eighth inch, you know, to lay out your graphics. They also got the different types of methods to use, but in this one, we're outlining with tape. So once you have your outline masked the way you like it, then you come back and apply three quarters to inch and a half to finish masking off uh, the surface that you don't want to get paint on. Once that's done, Use some masking paper to con, you know, continue masking it off to make sure that paint don't get on the, the surfaces that you don't want paint on. Once masked off, you can do your airbrush work or spray you know, with a spray gun or whatever method you're using. Once gra the graphic work is done, unmask everything and then apply one tack coat to help bridge over any uh, lines that you may have from the different layers of paint. And then apply two full wet coats. If you're going to be a lot doing a lot of sanding and buffing, you know you might apply another coat. So that pretty well uh, wraps up the steps, uh, except for buffing. You know you may want to buff when you're done after it's dry. But that pretty well wraps it up. And again, thanks for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.